I was recently reminded of a scene in the most excellent 1986 movie, Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. In this particular scene, the Enterprise's long-suffering chief engineer, Scotty, attempts to program one of the original Apple Macintosh computers. When the Macintosh fails to wake up to his voice commands of Computer, Computer, his crewmate, Dr. McCoy, helpfully hands him the mouse, which Scotty mistakes for a microphone and begins speaking into. It was funny back then, in the early days of the Silicon Era, because we couldn't imagine a world in which you could talk to a computer which would understand and respond to your voice. But science fiction has a habit of becoming science fact, and it tends to do it when you least expect it. Unfortunately, the futures we imagine sometimes have repercussions that we never anticipated. The threat is that we are sleepwalking into a dystopian future totally dominated by machine-generated imagery, video, and content in which original artworks in any form are a small niche. AI and generative image systems have arrived at warp 9 from what we thought was a far distant future. These systems seemed like a dream come true, but it's now becoming obvious that there will be a heavy price to pay for this magical technology. The intelligent machines of Star Trek have arrived, but unfortunately, it looks like first contact has been made not by the benevolent Federation, but by the soulless Borg. Engage. weeks ago, I uploaded a video about the anticipated impact of generative art systems on the stock photography market, which really caught people's attention and provoked some thought-provoking responses, which I'm delighted to respond to in this ear video. And since those comments fell well outside the intended focus of my first video, I thought it'd be interesting to look at the wider world of photography rather than just the commercial stock photo market. The advancements are moving at breakneck speed and seemingly every day YouTube recommends a fresh video highlighting some new mind-blowing AI advance. So let's get into this before it's all out of date again. While geeks like me have been nerding out on the technical aspects of generative art, I suspect that the camera companies have a different, slightly more downbeat take on matters. Because let's face it, the ability to magic up any photographic scene instantly gives services like mid-journey and stable diffusion a massive advantage over physical camera systems and the corduroy-wearing types that use them. And yes, before you all rise up as one and descend on the comments section of this video, I do realize that AI cannot be the real world results of cameras, at least at this stage of their development. I haven't seen a generative image yet, which does not have that weird soulless vibe to it. When they manage to generate sincerity, we're really fucked. And you do well to remember the speed with which we went from the childish scrapbooking of Dali a year ago to the photorealistic creations possible in Mid-Journey 5. Hobbyist photographers like myself will, of course, remain loyal customers of camera companies. But not everyone buys a camera because they like getting eaten alive by mosquitoes while standing amongst the mangrove bushes at sunset, hit deep in cold river water, desperate for a poo, but hanging in there because you don't want to miss out on the colour. Or maybe that's just me. Some people buy cameras for purely commercial purposes, and it's these declining sales that I think will start impacting the camera companies 
bottom line. Possibly not editorial or news photography initially, but product photography of any kind, automotive, fashion, electronics for instance, corporate photography, headshots, etc., and food photography are all now under serious threat from generative art. If you can get better results for a fraction of the cost with some tokenized reference-based generative art systems than you can with a $500 per day studio photographer, then a business's choice is quite simple. I don't think the day's come yet, but it's probably not far off. And don't go shooting the messenger here. I don't think this is a good outcome for the camera companies or the professionals that use their products, but I'm calling it like I see it. Stevie Wonder could see this coming. High-end camera sales and studio accessories will almost certainly see a downturn in sales, and anyone who earns a living in the aforementioned types of commercial photography needs to have a serious discussion with the brands that use their services. No matter how pally you are with the creative director, no one is indispensable in an organization driven by profit margins. One of the common themes expressed by you guys on my other video was that there was no way that generative art systems could threaten certain photographic niches. There will, the argument goes, always be a need for a proper historical record of an event, location or person that a computer generated image could never replace. And it's a strong argument too, but just as media organizations are already deploying AI bots to create content for their newspapers, magazines and blogs, so AI will start gradually intruding on this niche too. Here's a couple of examples that explain why I think this is the case. Firstly, and this may come as a bolt from the blue star revelation, but not all media organizations are honest, upright, truth-seeking paragons of virtue. No, really, it's true. Some media organizations will broadcast barefaced lies or publish complete bullshit if it fits their narrative. I'm sure one such organization has popped instantly into your head. It runs with Cox and is coincidentally owned by them too. Do you really think these sorts of organizations will pause to question the morals of publishing entirely AI-generated images or video? If they're willing to throw their hat in the ring with terrorists, do you really think they'll care about a make-believe photograph? Secondly, let's say for a second that your particular media organization doesn't have the budget to purchase the rights to a photograph of a big news story. You can use existing images as reference shots to create a copyright-free generative photo of that story. They're not aiming to win a Pulitzer for their hard-hitting photographic reportage. They probably just want something vaguely visual to sit atop a blog post or online newspaper story. Once upon a time, they'd have used some tried and tested image they did own the rights to, but very soon it will be just as easy to make a new image with a well-worded prompt. This sort of low-hanging fruit will be easy pickings for AI. Here's one that popped up several times in the comments on the other video as something that generative art couldn't touch. Wedding photography. Sorry guys, this is definitely not immune either. Yes, I'm guessing there'll always be people who want that human connection, a kindred spirit in a notch lapel waistcoat who can understand the betrothed couple's vision and capture it all on the big day. But consider for a second just how ludicrously staged many wedding photographs are. Imagine also how picky couples can be when it comes to their wedding imagery. I put it to you that there is a decent percentage of couples who will gleefully embrace computer-generated wedding imagery. I envision an entire sub-industry will emerge from this, which enables the happy couples to dress themselves in any style they imagine, from spacesuits to high couture. They'll be able to 
flick through virtual clothes racks to find precisely the look they want, limited only by their imagination, but not by their good taste. And they will be able to place themselves and their guests in any setting they can imagine too. So rather than having to book out an expensive wedding venue, one that's subject to the vagaries of weather and which may be difficult for wedding guests to travel to, they can pick anywhere from a volcanic outcrop on Alpha Centuri to the public bar at the Three Horseshoes pub in Norton, Hertfordshire. The options will be limitless, and I want a percentage if anyone actually goes off and makes this, by the way. They'll even be able to order specially printed wedding albums containing their generative wedding photos. Imagine all those possible upsells. Yes, it all sounds cheesy as fuck to me too, but think around the people you know or who are in your life and tell me honestly that there isn't a decent percentage that would not absolutely lap up this kind of service. Hmm? If they hop on chat GPT-4, they can even generate a groom speech, which is not, for the first time in recorded history, a cringe-inducing nightmare in which the bride is outed as a coke-sniffing nympho, and we find out that the groom poked one of the bridesmaids on his stag night. The world of fashion is going to be hit particularly hard by this, and it's already happening. I watched a news report on NBC talking about Virtual Fashion Week. Hundreds of collections were submitted along with fully AI-generated imagery. London Fashion Week now has a virtual and generative show, Ditto Australia and Paris. Recently, the Levi's fashion brand caught some flack after announcing that it would use generative systems to create more models with diverse body types and skin tones rather than, you know, spend your natural money on models with diverse body types and skin tones. Fashion shows are, of course, as much of an event as a simple showcase for clothing. But there's no reason why everything else can't be created entirely generatively. On the upside, models will no longer have to starve themselves down to size zero by chowing down on cotton wool. And footballers will have to start dating pop stars instead, just like the old days. As they said in that NBC News report, it's a sprawling industry employing photographers, fashion designers, production DJs, lighting professionals and set crew. An entire ecosystem. Pretty much every aspect of the outward-facing part of the fashion industry could be replaced by generative and AI systems. Companies could ditch the creatives and their support systems and just have a generative pipeline direct to the sweatshops in Bangladesh. Uh, here's one that's a prime target for generative takeover. Architecture and interior photography. Architectural practices already heavily lean on computer-generated visuals to showcase their visions for buildings, but even the smaller property developers could go to town on the marketing materials with generative imagery. Interior photography, the kind of stuff that fills those glossy magazines with adverts for weirdly shaped Italian sofas, that's easily transformed by generative art. Instead of going to the effort of dressing a room with carefully selected pieces, you can just use a prompt to achieve the same effect with far less cost and effort. Oh yeah, corporate photography. The domino has already fallen. Check out studioshop.ai or headshotpro.com. Their selling points are indistinguishable from real photos, no need for any physical shoot, perfectly matching photos, custom design styles, expertly lit and super fast. Why would you ever go at a borrower of hiring a specialist headshot photographer ever again when this is super convenient and, let's face it, far less embarrassing? So here's how I see it panning out for creatives in the fields I've just mentioned. There will 
I reckon, always be brands that prefer to use actual photographers shooting actual photographs. I strongly suspect that this will actually become a point of distinction, a branding feature, if you like. Exactly the kind of thing a high-end or luxury brand would use as a selling point. I can even picture the strap line. We never use generative imagery. All of our marketing materials are made with love, the old fashioned way, by real people. But most businesses, the vast majority of businesses, I suspect they won't give a fuck about not employing a real photographer because he or she was always just another entry on the liability side of a balance sheet. We're called creatives, but really we're no different to the accountant. Just another service industry based around a learned skill. In this post-COVID world with inflation running right in most countries of the world, wages stagnant or falling and the cost of living crisis crippling the lives of the citizens, costs will be cut wherever they can be found. I didn't set out to make the most depressing photography video of all time, but you guys can join the dots just as easily as me. We've all seen what these systems are capable of now and where they're headed. There is, however, one rare ray of hope for photographers, and that is the source material. These generative art systems are taught on the photographs and artworks that we humans produce. If we stop feeding them, then they stop learning. Since the AI models can't improve with ours, if they're not being fed new photography, then there is the possibility that photographers can earn some money from selling the imagery or the AI rights to their imagery to these organizations. The problem is that at the moment, those gluttonous middlemen, the stock agencies are sat right in the middle, creaming off virtually all of the profits. So photographers need to stop empowering the very systems that are destroying them by continuing to upload to stock libraries. And we need to either decide that we don't want our photos to be any part of these generative systems, or we need to get paid a sum commensurate to our creative endeavors. Show me the money. Think about it. If there's a new building, then an AI will have no idea what it looks like without photographers taking pictures of it. So if someone requests that building with a text prompt in something like Midjourney, the system will have no idea what to render. It's Gigo. The age-old maxim of computer programming holds true. Garbage in, garbage out. The systems are only ever as good as us. We hobbyist photographers can, of course, carry on amusing ourselves with our cameras until the end of time. I will always be a fan of real photography and someone who is infused by the possibilities created by a bit of glass positioned in front of a sensor or a small piece of cellulose acetate. But we need a very definite line drawn between the imagery we produce in the real world without cameras versus the fake stuff churned out in mid-journey, stable diffusion, and whatever follows them. There is absolutely no gray area here. There can be no combination group for photography competitions that incorporates the generative and the genuine. We need an iron curtain, a Berlin wall, and a great wall of China completely separating the fake stuff from the real. This means we'll need better checks and balances. At the moment, there's no foolproof way of ensuring a photograph's integrity. Perhaps the camera companies can incorporate some kind of NFC or crypto signature attached to a photograph at the second of its creation within a camera that proves its authenticity. I don't know if that's possible, but I know that with AI images winning flagship contests like the Sony's, we need to get far better at policing this stuff. The opening salvos in the AI photography wars have been made and we need to disengage cruise control and start making actual decisions 
about these incredible technologies. Are we prepared to be assimilated by the Borg-like AI and generative systems, or do we prefer to retain our distinctiveness, our soul, and our humanity? As Spock so logically put it, computers make excellent and efficient servants, but I have no wish to serve under them. Make it so.